Okay guys, this is going to be a relatively short one. What we're going to take a look at is the Mopar M1 street manifold compared to the Holly. The Holly Street Dominator. The Holly Street Dominator is home with Rob, but if you just take a quick look at them, they look extremely similar, except this one has a real sharp edge at the top of the plenum. Now, was this used as fuel shearing? I don't know. But as soon as I looked at it, I said, it's probably not going to, I don't think it's going to flow nearly as well as the Holly. Well, was I right or was I wrong? Hmm. This does have a touch deeper plenum. That needs to be factored in as well. So, I almost finished. Hold on. Okay, what we got is we got our Holly Street Dominator Mopar M1. So all the pluses and minuses are written on this one in reference to the Holly. I like the Holly design just by the, 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 the plenum. Okay? Was I right or was I wrong? Well, minus, 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 minus equals plus, plus, plus. I wasn't expecting that. Now, how much is it up? Not a huge amount, but it's up. I wasn't expecting that. Okay, take a quick look at our swirls. Pretty much dead through the entire usable range. Pretty much dead through the entire usable range. Then, from there, we decided to use our very pretty Wilson spacer, four hole tapered. And as a rule, before we did any flowing on it, I told uh, I told Rob, I said I like spacers. I bet I bet this is going to be a winner. So, what did we get here? As far as comparing this manifold Holly to the M1. Minus, 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 plus, minus, 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 plus, plus, plus. In fact, I had to search around, and between 0.6 and 0.7, this manifold with a spacer pulled 296 CFM. I didn't do that on the Holly. But it's still, it's still pretty good. I mean, I wouldn't doubt that it does almost as well. And the spacer gave it a little bit different flow curve. I mean, this is this is a little interesting right here. We have a reverse swirl here. Now, what's causing that? I don't know. We didn't have that on the Holly. Now, would a reverse swirl be a good idea or a bad idea? I'm going to think it's a bad idea, but I'm not 100% sure of that. I remember when I used to do Chevy swirl ports, and I would use, I, obviously, their swirl ports, their screw ports, right? They make a huge amount of swirl. And I like to do my notch around the exhaust so it feeds exhaust flow better in. This is late 80s, early 90s. And when I pulled those heads off, you could see where the swirl was going in one direction, and then when it, the piston was coming up to the quench, that relief by the exhaust would actually initiate swirl in the opposite direction. So, I'm going to see if I can draw that out for you. Alright, not a great drawing, it's tiny too. All right, this would be my little, my little notch by the exhaust valve, right? And the rest of this quench whip pad was pretty high. And this arrow here is the direction of the swirl from the, the screw port itself. But this little arrow here is from when the piston would come up to the quench, it would initiate another swirl this way. And your spark plug is, you know, right about here. And you could see this on the burn pattern of the piston. That was a great running engine. 
I mean, so much so that I re really want to do some some uh, throttle body injection swirl ports and uh, prove it. Okay, forgot where I was on here. Oh, we were doing the reverse swirl. So that's the kind of thing where I don't know where it came from. I mean, obviously it comes from the spacer because before the spacer we had zero swirl, right? Now we have minus 654, 645. Interesting stuff. In any case, <laughs> it's a single plane with a 750 on it that's flowing almost 300 through a first cut. My first cut, anyway. First cut, W2. I think that's damn good. In fact, I was quite impressed. But so far, I've been really impressed by these W2s. Really like them. As a matter of fact, I'm going to... I'm going to leak a little info. Somebody saw the videos we were making and got in contact with Rob, and uh, he, he has a machine shop. He's going to be cutting them for uh, the bigger valves and put guides in them and mill them. So that's a lot of extra work that I don't have to worry about. And then uh, he wants me to do a little more work to that first cut. Maybe you do a second cut, maybe a third. We'll see. And he's going to try to copy them. In any case, I'm going to cut them for a 52. 50 also, I should say. 50 also. I think that's really going to... I Like I said, I mean, that, that head flew, flowed 315 when the bench was cold, first pull. And I fiddled between 0.6 and 0.7 inch lift. It went right to 315. So... Going to a little bit bigger valve, intake and exhaust that we can actually put some throat into with a 50. I should be able to get 330 out of them. Otherwise, I'll have to hang up my grinder because it'll be it'll be just embarrassing at that point. All right, guys, I've still got I've got this race manifold to flow, and I've got the tunnel ram to flow. And I'd like to get that done tonight so I can post it for you guys soon. Other than that, thanks for hanging out, guys. Have a good night. You know what? It's not bolted together, but it is a nice-looking piece with a little spacer action. It really is. That would look pretty darn good under the hood of somebody's uh, Mopar. All right, guys.